been like a fast train journey that you can't get off of. Yeah, I don't know how to explain it exactly because you don't really get time to just chill and think about it. You know, it's just a constant, just keep going. I guess I will get time at some point. <laughs> It's all been pretty crazy, you know, like there's been a pivotal moments in many of the shows that I've been doing to go to different countries and have the kind of love and admiration of fans from places that you've never been before. Like going to Poland and having like 3,000 people just like singing your songs or they've made like banners and they know every song, you know. It's not only a surprise, it's overwhelming, like emotionally. Well, the album kind of feels like it's um, it's taken a long time because it has it's gone through different periods. Like I could have put out three different kind of very different albums at different times. Could have put out an album out the year before. I've had the material, but it just I just kept feeling like there was another song to be written, and um, I called it human because I wanted every song to have a human element. Like it has to come from a real place or from a real real situation. You know, no matter what the song's about, and I'm, I'm kind of glad I achieved that. It, it, you know, it means that there's no, all the songs have something behind them. You know, and um, I'm happy with the way it turned out. I got to write with some great people on the, on the album. You know, I kind of picked and and chose the people that I wanted to write with or wanted to work with producer-wise. I got to write with a guy called Foy Vance, and he's a songwriter from. I'm Northern Ireland and um, a hero of mine and I had this song that I wrote about a friend of mine's daughter. The song's called Odetta and I, and I wrote kind of the first part of the song and didn't really know where to take it and it was sitting around for a long time and I was like I don't know what I'm going to do with this, I don't know how to finish it because it was such a sort of poignant song about a situation that was kind of close to my heart so uh, yeah it was just a, kind of a phone call and an email and to say would you be up for writing with me because I need to finish this song. He came to my house and we wrote the song together and um, it turned out probably my favourite song on the album because it's, you know, it's one of them real personal ones. So. Yeah, there's a lot. We, I'm, I'm started to kind of, I have this really clear idea of what I want the next project to sound like. And actually I was going through some songs that didn't make it on the album because of the way they sounded um, and yeah there's like a plethora of songs to go through so I don't think I'll have any problem with the second record. Uh, yeah so sometimes it's kind of lost in translation um, in different countries because they don't people don't really know what a rag and bone man is I think it's just a weird name for an artist <laughs> but um, uh, so Rag and Bone Man is someone uh, who traditionally went round on a horse and cart and they took other people's rubbish like scrap metal and all kinds of stuff. But it was it actually came from a TV series called Steptoe and Son. And I think you guys had one over here called Stanford and Son. And I used to watch this uh, series with my grandfather and um, it kind of the name Rag and Bone Man seemed kind of synonymous with um, with like blues artists the way their name sounded. Like, I remember flicking through my dad's records and seeing, like, Bessie Smith and uh, Johnny Hooker and Sonny Boy Williamson and I heard Rag and Bone Man and I was like, it sounds like that, you know, rhythmically when you say the word. So it, it just stuck. <laughs>